Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of I Wish They Knew, a show where business and educational leaders share a tip, practice, or insight they wish others knew more about. I'm Joe Hirsch, and today's guest is Steve Brown. Steve is the VP of HR at La Rosa's Pizza, a family-owned pizzeria, an iconic pizzeria with 65 locations operating in Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. Steve's also the author of two great books, HR on Purpose and HR Rising. Can you tell what he does for a living? Steve, welcome to the show. (laughs) Thanks, Joe. It's great to be here. So I need to ask you before we dig in, what is something that people might be surprised to know about you? I am a giant Monty Python fan. I've loved them forever i've seen every episode over and over the holy grail is by far my favorite movie and i just love the english humor and british wit very dry kind of off the wall fits me very well and a good episode of monty python goes with which pizza topping well spam of course no we don't do spam. (laughs) but uh gosh any pizza is good with anything really all right um i happen to be kind of the hawaiian uh variety myself little pineapple, little green pepper. Love it. You know, don't knock it till you try it. That's what I tell my friends. Yeah, um, I like it. Yeah, yeah, it's a little spicy, a little savory. So this show is focused on one question, and it's a question we ask of all of our guests. What is something you wish more people knew? I wish people knew how to use nuance in an organization because it isn't understood. When you have new employees, They don't get the hidden meanings behind things, the assumed culture, things that happen in the fabric of the company. So nuance isn't taught, and I wish it was. What do you think a new employee is not getting right away when he or she begins that new position? I think they're trying so hard to prove themselves that that they're running so quickly and want to be seen so much and so visible. They don't understand there's room to breathe, there's room to listen, there's room to learn. You can learn and and as well as bring a bunch of skills to the table. I love the new generation because they want to add value quickly and they should be allowed to add value quickly. It would be better if those who are in the organization taught them how to do that well. So what are some of the ways that leaders can help smooth this process, which I guess would take shape over the first few months that the new employees on the job? I think both from an HR standpoint and from a business standpoint. So I would have a mentor assigned to somebody to say, let me tell you the ins and outs. When you work with Joe, it's like this. When you work with Susie, it's like this. When you work with Mike, it's like this. So that you have that understanding and it allows them to succeed in those relationships. Hey, I think you should go lunch to lunch with Kevin because. My boss does this to me all the time. When I first started, he said, hey, I think you should go to lunch with Michael, who's the CEO. And I said, really? He goes, yeah, get on his calendar. Just tell him you want to go to lunch. And when we did that, we got to spend time with each other outside of just day-to-day tasks. Relationship building is how you learn new nuance and how to work within nuance. Uh, plus, it's just fun to say nuance. I mean, come on. It's a great word. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, The other part is uh, HR needs to make sure that people stay active and are engaged all the time. It's great. I saw an article one time, and in fact, I think I wrote one too, called The Second Day. Mm. The first day we throw bells and whistles. Hey, you're new. It's great. Here's your new thing. Here's your title. Here's your name on the door. And then the second day we're like, get to work. And people choose to leave within two days in an organization. So if that second day has had as much energy and emphasis as the first day, and you really cared that someone was there all the time, not just to perform to performance reviews, you would change the culture of your company. So what are some of the things that are getting in the way of building those relationships and, and being that nuanced support for the employee? <laughs> the myth that we don't have enough time. We're so busy. Oh my gosh, I have no time. I can't do this. I can't squeeze this in. And I absolutely disagree. It's how we choose to use our time. So HR needs to really step out of their comfort zone and go into organizations and say, hey, Joe, you're in charge of managing the following people. 
How are you spending time with them? Are you spending time with them? What's keeping you from spending time with them? And be very intentional and be that shepherd that connects everybody. When you do that, when you force the connections to happen, then I'm asking people to be with their people all the time. You can do this virtually now. You can do it electronically. It's not an in-person thing. In-person would be fantastic. But until then, you can make sure to spend the time with others on purpose. The more you do that, your people managers will become others focused instead of just work focused. Hmm. And it changes. So what are some of the benefits you see with this other focus, the focus on other people's development and not just the work that they're producing? Quick story. Uh, I asked my general managers to do something crazy and say hi and thank you to everybody who came to work for 30 days in a row. That was it. Hi, Joe. Thanks for coming in. Really appreciate you being here. Move on. That's all I want to do. Something that small. The ones that did it, not everybody did, <laughs> but the ones that did it go, man, I work with a lot of great people. Hmm. We didn't hire anybody else. They just finally paid attention to the good people who wanted to come and do good work. So from a people manager side of the thing, it's a huge game changer. We keep talking about engagement and empowerment and all these things, but we do nothing about it because we make it more programmatic. I think we need to make it behavioral. Do these simple things, see what happens, and then keep coaching people through it. So it's the small things that really make the big difference. Yes, the big things fail because they take too much time, energy, and they're not sustainable. You've heard this, I'm sure, flavor of the month. Let's try this. And we can come up with all kinds of historically amazing shifts that organizations tried. And ironically, none of them are still in place. But the small so things are. Just the small behavioral shifts, small things that we can do every day to invest in people, to look after them, look after their well-being, their whole selves, and ultimately the work they're doing. Yeah. I don't want to see people fail. Back to nuance. If I don't pay attention to you, you will be forgotten. The more you're forgotten, the more you're disengaged. The more you disengage, the more opportunity for you to leave. It takes away the talent focus that we say that we should have. If people are truly talented, they're worth our time. Mm. Powerful thoughts and a great, great wish. Steve, thank you for sharing your wish with us today. Where can Thanks. people go to, uh, to find out more about you and the books? Uh, two places. One, I'm really active on Twitter, at SBrownHR. There's an E on the end of Brown and LinkedIn. You can get me there. I'd be glad to connect with you. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Steve. Thanks, Joe.